What is the Leidenfrost effect? We're going to be demonstrating it and explaining to you how it works using water and liquid nitrogen. We actually don't know if it's Leiden or Leiden, so if you know which one it is, let us know down in the comments. But for now, we'll just say it with a German accent and then we cover it all of our bases. <laughs> Leidenfrost! We are destructive creativity. I'm Jonathan and this is my sister Eliana. We exist for you, for science, and for fun. So if any of those things appeal to you, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Before we go and demonstrate the Leidenfrost effect for you, let's go over some of the history of it. The Leidenfrost effect is named after a German doctor named Johann Gottlieb Leidenfrost. He first described it in 1751. In the simplest terms, the Leidenfrost effect basically explains why water dances on a really hot pan like you see back here. The Leidenfrost effect, also known as film boiling, occurs when a liquid comes into contact with a solid that is at a much higher temperature than that liquid's boiling point. So upon contact between the liquid and the really hot solid, that first instantaneous contact creates, in essence, a mini explosion of steam. And that steam insulates and propels that water droplet upwards and away from that hot surface. And every time it comes back down, it touches and creates again that mini steam explosion and shoots it up again. This is fascinating because if we were to just boil water, a tiny little droplet of water is gone very, very quickly. But due to the Leidenfrost effect, eventually this water will evaporate, but it will dance around and last way longer than if we were just to boil it away. All right, so we have heated up our hot plate and we're just gonna take some water and we're going to splash it onto the pan. And you can see them start to dance all around the pan. And that's because of the water vapor that's underneath it. And it's acting both as an insulator and a tiny little propeller that'll make them dance across the pan. We've known about the Leidenfrost effect for over 250 years, but we still don't really know how to use it in a practical way. We'll talk about some theoretical uses later, but they're very theoretical. Let's show you another Leidenfrost effect. I'm gonna take off my ring here just so that I don't accidentally freeze my hand off. So I have a jug here of liquid nitrogen. Let's open this up and I'll show you that it actually is liquid nitrogen. I'll pour a little bit of it out. That's really, really cold stuff. And if I were to actually have that sitting on my hand, I would get instant frostbite. Now let's, I'm gonna pour it on this little flower. This is fresh, still smells good. It's very bendy and natural. I'm just gonna put it down there and pour some liquid nitrogen all over it here. We'll let that boil away. Currently, all of the moisture in that flower is being flash frozen. Really cool. And there we go. So this, this flower, I can just destroy just like that. So cool. So this is actually liquid nitrogen. And we're gonna do some more experiments on liquid nitrogen at a different episode, probably coming out next week-ish. Once again, don't do this at home. I'm doing this because I know what's going to happen and I'm totally prepared to accept the consequences, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So if I were to allow liquid nitrogen to touch my skin and actually sit on it, I would get frostbite. However, I happen to know that due to the Leidenfrost effect, I can have my hand and I can pour liquid nitrogen all over it. Ooh, it's a little bit tingly, but I'm fine. I'll try and hold it just like that. Oh, it's really, really cold. But what's happening here is because my hand is so much hotter than liquid nitrogen. The liquid nitrogen is having that flash gas point. So it's actually boiling so fast, it's creating a layer of gas in between the liquid nitrogen and my hand. 
and that's insulating both the liquid nitrogen from the heat of my hand and my hand from getting flash frozen and getting frostbite. So cool! Don't do this at home! We should try and pour some liquid nitrogen onto a hot burner. I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen, but let's try it! So we have our liquid nitrogen and we have our hot plates. Now if I understand the Leiden Frost effect correctly, which I'm pretty sure I do, the greater the temperature differential, the more pronounced the effect is. So if I were to pour some of this liquid nitrogen onto my hot plate, let's see what happens. Look at that. That's liquid nitrogen. So this is close to a 400 degree difference. And it's just kind of floating there. And I can blow it around just like that. That is so cool. Wow. Let's try that again. Wow. Okay, this is seriously worth geeking out over. This is awesome. So what's happening here is it's created that layer of steam and gas vapor underneath the liquid nitrogen and it's just levitating there. So if this this if this plate was perfectly level, it would just levitate and at the smallest outside influence, so gravity or air pressure or anything like that, it would move around, essentially creating a material with the absence of friction. Very cool. Very cool. I'm going to try that again. Look at that. Wow. So does the Leiden Frost effect only work with liquid nitrogen and water? No, not at all. In fact, it works the other way as well, kind of. You see, the Mythbusters tested this out a couple of years ago where they had a pot of boiling lead. It's molten lead, very, very hot metal. And they were able to get their hand wet and then dip their hand into the molten lead. And there's been a few other people that have tried this as well. It's not recommended, but the Leiden Frost effect created that insulating layer of gas around their hand and it protected them from getting instant third degree burns. So cool! Now, I said before that we were going to talk about some theoretical uses for the Leiden Frost effect. And we can't talk about those without talking about the Leyden Frost Maze. If you take your hot plate and carve ridges into it, scientists have found that you can actually control where the water goes. In fact, you can even get it to climb uphill. So is this just a cool toy? Well, yeah, it's really, really cool. But what are some of the applications of this? Well. Currently, nothing is really viable, but theoretically, as you can see, you can make it go in a circle depending on the ridges. So if we had that based over a, say, a thermal vent or uh, a stable heat source, we could have the water going in a circle, which really, that's all you need to create a turbine to create energy from a generator. Again, highly inefficient right now, but the theoretically, every, all the pieces are there. And who knows? Maybe we'll be seeing some self-propelled vehicles powered by the Leidenfrost effect. The Leidenfrost effect has withstood the test of time to be a really, really cool science experiment. And who knows? Maybe it'll become really useful. Either way, we are really happy to have been able to play with it and show you this cool effect. And again, we have new content coming out every single week. And next week, we're going to be playing with liquid nitrogen and just doing all sorts of cool experiments. I think next week, we're going to be cooking with liquid nitrogen. Really cool. We are Destructive Creativity. Till next time, stay safe, have fun, do science. Bye. Johan. 
Johann Gottlieb Leidenfrost. No, stop that. Okay.